Well, it's another Arctic morning here, and I'll go check the outdoor temperatures. It was about 32 below when I first got up. It's, the sun's just coming up now. And what I wanted to do today is I wanted to go check the temperatures on each of the wood burners that I made. I got th I'll have three going today, and I got myself a, a brand new uh, infrared thermometer, one that will range up to 2100 degrees. I could never get a real accurate temperature reading with that other one because it didn't range up high enough. I was afraid I was going to break it. But I got a brand new one now that will range up higher. So I'll have three fires going. I'll have the masonry heater hybrid fireplace going in the house. The wood stove with the adjusted burn chamber going in the barn. And the rocket stove going in the greenhouse. And I'll take readings on each one of them and see which one is burning the hottest. Well, first I'll go check that uh, the outdoor temp on the thermometer on the solar shed. Let's see what we got. We had 32 below a little bit earlier. There, just uh, maybe 29 below now. 28, 29 below. It's a cold one. Sun's coming up. I'm going to go check the temperature in the fireplace in the house. I'm going to go now and start about maybe a half hour ago. There's the exhaust from the hybrid fireplace, masonry heater type structure I got inside the house. It should be pretty clean. You know, it's burning over that 1,000 degrees, you know, past the 1,100 degrees even. And I'll go check that temperature right now. Here's a masonry heater slash hybrid fireplace. They keep the oven open right now to get a little more heat coming out. I started this fire about uh, maybe a little over a half hour ago. And I'll check the temps. I've got a brand new thermometer here, and that's the range it'll go up to. So I'll check out what the temperature is. First I'll close the draft so we don't have any smoke coming back in. And open it up and see what we got going. Fire brick on the back of the stove is about 1,234. It's pretty hot in my hand. Whew. Whoa, I gotta put a glove on, I think, to check it. I put a glove on so my hand don't get cooked. Well, we're getting about 1385. Some of this up to 1500. It's exiting out there. I'm getting about 1,262. So it's getting up there pretty good. Burning all those bad gases off. Now I'll go check the wood stove in the barn the same way. Well, out in the barn here, I just threw a couple little pieces of wood on the fire here and I'll take a reading. I better put my glove back on again because I'm afraid to burn my hand if I don't have my glove on. I'm gonna open the door and see what kind of reading we get. It's still like about 25 below so we got really a probably a stronger draft on the chimney than normal. And you can hear when I open the door, it wants to draw in a lot more air. I guess the draft isn't strong enough, really. That's the draft there. And I, I keep it open all the way, but it could still take more if I had a bigger draft. So we'll open up and see what we got. Well, I can't see where I'm pointing it. That's somewhere right across the top of that one 
log that's burning. 1200. So we're getting those high temps to burn off the gases that cause creosote. And something that's smoking. Boy, my hand is really. Oh, my, my glove is starting to smoke. I'm going to shut this down for a second. My glove was starting to smoke, catching fire. It really, it really kicks the heat out the front of this uh, stove here. This is the stove that I put that little insulated uh, burn chamber into the front. And it goes out the back and up around each side. Hard to see in there. And you can hear the draft of that uh, <clears throat> air wash over the door coming down. I don't want to get this camera too close to there. I'll let this burn a little bit and test it again because I had just thrown that wood on there. Sometimes it's hard to know what the temperature is when you first put the wood in to maybe 10 minutes after can be a lot different I'll try it again and get by without burning my glove hold, hold it back a little bit more well the coals on the bottom there are, you know about 1400 and the the fire across, you know, that top log there is, you know, that's the fire brick in the back. It's 1,200. That's what burns that creosote gases off. And I just stuck these logs in there about 10 minutes ago, maybe not even 10 minutes ago. And the coals are hotter, you know, they're up there. And my glove is smoking right now. Ouch! Right through. Now it's actually a little bit hotter now. Whoa! <clears throat> Almost rolled out the front. And that's, I can see the little dot right across that log. So that's pretty close to about what the masonry heater is doing in temperature wise for burn temperatures. You know, I can't get a good down in there. Try over on this side over here. Well, I guess right down in there we're getting those, right in the coals there. We're getting, yeah, it's up to 1600 there. Yeah, it was up to 1613 was a high temp. So it's burning pretty similar to the masonry heater fireplace in the house. And now I'll go do that rocket stove too and see what that's going. Both of these have insulated burn chambers. The masonry heater and this one here has an insulated burn chamber. That's why it brings that temperature up to those temps to burn off those uh, creosote gases and burns up everything. That's where you get those clean burns and get a lot of heat out of your wood that way. You know. And this is the rocket stove I have temporarily set up in the greenhouse. I just got it piped out a window right there and just a short piece of Pipe on top. It's probably about a four and a half foot piece of six inch pipe. So not much of a chimney. It's just kind of sloped at a gradual angle. I just got it kind of tied up to suspend it. And I'm sure the 
wood stove Gestapo agents go crazy if they see a setup like this. And this, well, this is just temporary anyway. But this thing really cranks out the heat. Now, take some readings now. Let's see what we got. I like to totally just check the temperature on the top of this. Just the top of the stove, we got over a thousand degrees. That's typically the way this burns. When I had it in the barn, I had to put a great big cast iron frying pan over the top of that full of refractory cement just so in case it bumped it or something, you wouldn't have a bad, real bad day. And I'll try to take <clears throat> some temperatures down inside the burn chamber. It's a little harder to get at than in those other stoves, but if I pull it back a little bit, you can probably see what's going on down there. Um, 19, yeah, it's up there pretty good in spots. Oh, I gotta get it. 18, 17, 1900, boy, it's hot on my hand, holy cow. Oof. So, so this is putting out some higher temperatures in the other stoves, or fireplaces and stoves. But with a, something like this, it, it, you have to need a lot more attention. I'm going to keep this fed. You can see the starting to glow red down there, the metal on this, this stainless steel. So I, like I said, it's, I'll try to get some more readings in there. So I guess those, see those, drain those fire brick, but really hot, 2000. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hot right there. So that one's burning over 2,000 degrees in there. Which is a few hundred degrees higher than the other ones are burning. Well, the rocket stove won out on the highest temperature burn. And it does take a little more attention than the other stoves because it, it pours through the wood a little bit faster. You know, it needs a lot more attention. You know, we're getting over 2,000 degree burn in there, and it just pours right through it. And it, it's a good heater, that's for sure. Once you get over a certain temperature where it's burning clean, I don't know if, you know, much more higher temperatures really matter because it's burning clean anyway. But I know this one does take more attention than those uh, other wood stoves. You know, you have to kind of constantly adjust this and feed it. Where the other ones you can you know throw some wood in and let it go for a while. This one usually needs some kind of attention within you know 15-20 minutes, but it's definitely burning hotter. I think that wood stove in the barn would probably burn a little bit hotter if we had a little more of a opening for the draft so it could gather more air going through it, because it is kind of acting a little bit like a rocket stove. But this one wins out on the highest temperature. And when you get these higher temperatures, you almost want to store that in some kind of thermal mass. I think it's almost necessary. Otherwise, you know, you just get this hot burn and then it's out. But when you got some kind of thermal mass in there to store it, you know, you can let it go out and it'll radiate back out for hours. And that's what happens in the house with the masonry fireplace. We just burn it for a few hours and all night it's just out because it rocks get all heated up and it just radiates back out. Now in the greenhouse here, I have PEX tubing buried about a foot below the dirt. It's just a dirt floor in here right now. And I want to use all that thermal mass, all that dirt, to store heat overnight so I don't need to have a fire burning all the time. So I just need to figure out what I'm going to build for heating water. It'll be something that I do build. It's not going to be this rocket stove. 
but it will have something with a insulated burn chamber I'm sure because that seems to be what really works good to get those temps up and some kind of arrangement to heat up water and pump it through all this PEX tubing and that's what I got to figure out yet just exactly how I'm going to do that and I, I will need some type of real chimney not just a pipe out the window I don't think that'll fly too good but anyway, the rocket stove won out on the high temp burns, that's for sure. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you again. If this is a trick, heads will roll. Even if this is not a trick, heads will roll. <laughs>